Hello and welcome back to Digging for Drez. Last time, we learned a rather valuable lesson about checking thoroughly what our contracts are asking of us. Which really is a good tip for not just Kerbal Space Program, but real life as well. If you, someone gives you a contract, it's generally prudent to read it. Anyway, we are just launching into a polar orbit to fulfill yet another contract. And this is just a generic satellite, no special requirements. And it's basically the same rocket as last time. Except for the fact that uh, this one now has a thermometer on it. And like I said I would, I have between episodes launched that Geosat with the correct instrumentation. And we can see it up here, right where it's supposed to be. And this is where we're going this time. And we need to go a lot more west to keep this thing straight. Whoa, don't divert quite so much. Okay, we can slow way down. Fairing. And we've basically seen this rocket before, so I'll cut back to uh, when we start doing orbital maneuvers. So here we are over the North Pole. I've already queued up a manoeuvre. Now the trick to get into these really, really big orbits that are a long way out is to launch as close to them as you can and then plan a manoeuvre from a parking orbit to either the ascending or descending node. Then, once you're there, you can then use the manoeuvre nodes to plan a transfer maneuver that will circularize and put you in the correct inclination. And burnout. Let's just put this all the way up. Put a camera shake it. Whoa, and we overcooked it. So we'll turn around. There we go, that should be close enough. Now, so we're pretty much on the ascending node at this point. So we can then make our inclination change at the same time as we circularize. Now, this is a problem. You basically got to keep tweaking the nodes till you get where you need to go. Now we'll move that periapsis around. That should be good. And once we're there, we simply make the burn. Not overcook it. To 
employ antennas and service bays and get paid and now that we've got a lot more money we can afford to upgrade the runway because we have some aircraft that we need to launch specifically the Seeker Mark II with Pat, why not? Come on, there we are. Whoa! Bit of a hop, skip, and a jump. So, as you can see, I've uh, tweaked it a bit. Mainly, I've lowered the wings and basically made it so that we can land at a particular location get out and then do science and then get back in so let's head out don't need full thrust just take the brakes off and up we go Now, we have a dual objective this time. First of all, we have some more science to get, but also we have a few contracts. Now, we won't be able to get that one because it's a bit too high, but we'll be able to get these surface ones, and after that, we're going to be heading north to the poles. And uh, Pat doesn't seem to be too thrilled about his latest escapade. I suppose that's under understandable considering his last one rendered him lost in space. Now we are approaching the landing zone. Just have to find out exactly where it is. So. I'm pointing right at it. Yeah, I think we can land that. Seems to be quite a bit uneven. Looks to be right here, halfway up this ridge. Yep. So. I'll have to take this slow and measured. That's really the key to landing anything. Planes, rockets, whatever. Take it slow and easy. But not so slow that you end up with no control authority. Just slow enough that you can touch down. And not 
break things. Okay, pull up. Get on the uphill. Now, I think we might be inside both areas. Oh, temperature. Yay! We got some from both. Let's see, do we have any other science that we can get from here? None that's worthwhile. Because we're in the grasslands. But... If we can get out... Hmm. Yes, I think we have gotten all the science there is to get from this area. But... We can get down off the plane. Up you get. You view report? No. Nah. But we will plant a flag. And we will call it Grasslands Site Alpha. Spelt PH, isn't it? There we go. Yes, I know how to spell. Can we get up here? No, we'll have to try the other wing. It would so suck if I couldn't climb back up. Come all this way only to not be able to get back into my plane. Oh no. Can I climb on the aileron? Please? Yes. Whoa. Camera. Shake. Climb. Good Kerbal. Up you get. And back in. Really glad they added in the clamber function. Set takeoff thrust. Get out of here. And we will head north. And before we get to the poles proper, I think we'll make a stop in the tundra. So, we're on our way to the North Pole, as I said, and uh, I've just noticed something. This little bar down here, it's the new overheat meter, but it's not showing the overheat for the engine, it's showing the overheat for this wheel that's attached to the engine. And just before, I was running at a little bit higher throttle than this. And that almost filled, and there was one for the engine. So previously, engine overheat was shown down here. I like the idea of seeing an overheat meter for parts, but I'm a bit skeptical about how they've actually put it in. I can't off the top of my head come up with a, a way to do it otherwise, but it just gets a little cluttered, I think, especially if you're seeing it within the glow of the engine. It's a bit hard to tell what it's actually saying, but just a little heads up for you all. If you happen to see a little bar like this on your ship, Pay close attention to it, because you might be losing some parts very soon. And we have now arrived, well apparently at the shores, but we are over the tundras. I imagine it's saying shores because, yep, we were over the shores of that lake. But now it is time to descend and find a place to land. 
Let's make a spiral descent. Not unlike a paraglider would. Biomes in this game can be a little finicky. For example, there's since at least 0.23 been a glitch in them, whereas you can get to the tundra just by going west of the KSC a few kilometers. Here we go, in the tundra. One not so great thing about the tundra is that it's very undulating and uneven. So landing is a bit of a treat. Let's see if we can land at the shores of this little lake here. And I don't have any lights on this, so let's use my instruments up there to find how high we are above the surface and not crash into it. Okay, we've got a nice sandy beach here to land on. Let's do a bit of a slip maneuver. Slow down. Wings level, flare, and down. Textbook landing. Observe mystery goo. Okay, apparently we have been to the tundras with the goo before. Keep that data. And apparently crew put as well. Yes, I uh, must have exploited that little glitch of the biomes. Yes, I know. Okay, let's just board again. Get another. There we go. Thermometer. Read out. We'll take that data. Let's see if Whoa. Um Okay. Patrick, you uh go for the uh Parkour championship, are you? We're probably going to end up running over this flag, but that's okay. The tundra. Let's help. Let's see if we can turn off caps lock. It's cold enough, but where is the snow? Don't worry about that. We will get to the snow in due course. Climb. There we go. And on board. Now, 
I'll just wait here for a little bit to let this wheel cool down. Shouldn't take too long. Correction, it took about an hour and a half. During which time we have lost daylight. But the beauty of being so close to the poles means that we can just take off, head west a bit, and should be able to get back into the light in no time. How about we pull up and not crash into that? Yeah, see? Don't know if you can see it on the video, but there is a dawn glow over there. Let's do a bit of ground hugging flying, shall we? Now, trouble is, I will not have nearly enough fuel to get back to the KSC. So, once we get to the poles, I think I'll just recover it. You know what? Full thrust. That's not dally about. Well, Pat, there's the snow you were hoping for. Now, we are in the regime of not knowing exactly where the ground is. But luckily, we have our radar altimeter. And it's saying we are getting a bit close. So let's see, how close are we to the poles? We are a little ways off yet. And being that it's so cold, we have now got a contrail at low altitude. Ooh, that looks pretty hazy on the horizon there. Nice touch. I've really never been to the poles very much at all in my playthrough of this game. A year of playing it and I've barely been to the poles. It seems a lot of people seem to forget that the poles are here. And it's actually a rather nice milestone, or a stepping stone if you will. Is if you can fly a plane to the poles, it's basically flying a quarter of the way around the planet. If you can fly a plane to the poles and back, that's even better. That is definitely some sort of haze. That was not there before. seen a mod that can give distance fog like this, but I didn't realize it was actually part of the game. Now all we need is dynamic clouds, because that would be a real treat, being able to see clouds forming and rolling in over these ridges here. Anyone who's watched the documentary on Ant Antarctica has probably seen something like that with the catabatic offshore winds pulling cloud down and around cliffs and ridges and here we are at the ice caps. Very nice.
now from what I understand is the same biome whether you're north or south so this will be well not the only mission to the poles but it will probably be the biggest one now smooth featureless ice not the best for judging your speed or your altitude so this is an IFR landing through and through I've gotten very good at these in the past due to having played with the planet shines mod which if you're on the light side of a body gives you gives the spacecraft a glow on the planet side of it as the light from the sun is reflected but at the same time on the dark side it is really dark polar ice caps you observed goo great what does the thermometer say it's cold enough to it's cold enough to freeze water solid well yes it is that's what we are landing on what does the crew report say you've recorded right I'm really gonna have to find that crowdsourced science messages thing take data we'll take data from there let's have an EVA report EVA report from yep all that generic stuff smack your face and again I'm beginning to see how you ended up stuck in a capsule in orbit Pat You're not exactly the most coordinated of Kerbals here at the poles see if we can spell right I might build an igloo you go do that Pat and screenshot so thanks for joining me for this episode of digging for Drez until next time, see you later.